Routes are important in 18xx games. Routes earn companies money. Money causes players to win. Routes are made of track. So let's take a look at the track in 18 Chesapeake and see if we can figure out the best routes to lay or how to lay tragic track for our friends. I'm Joe Leo and this is 18xx training. Let's play with some trains. For this video, I'm going to assume you know how to play 18 Chesapeake. If you do not know how to play 18 Chesapeake, I would strongly recommend Will Tappen's video on how to play. I will put a link to it in the description. In 18 Chesapeake, there are 95 track tiles of 45 different types. This video is going to concentrate on the early game. We're only going to take a look at runs and tile placements until the three trains are purchased. This will limit us to looking at the first 13 types of tiles. Let's take a look at the plane track first. The supplied quantity of plain yellow track numbers 7, 8, and 9 is intended to be sufficient for most games. If it runs out, more should be constructed. Which means that, in effect, there are an infinite number of 7, 8, and 9 tiles. There are 7 tiles that can go over cities. They are all straight cities, number 57s. Small towns are next. There are 3 of them, number 3, number 4, and number 58. There is only 2 of each of these tiles, and they cannot be upgraded. There are a total of 3 single-dit hexes. Columbia, Wilmington, and Fredericksburg. Since there's a limited number of these tiles, all three of these hexes cannot have the same single dit tile. Also, once these three tiles have been placed, those are permanent connections. They can never be upgraded. What does this mean for the players? Let's take a look. In this situation, both Norfolk and the CNO are racing toward Fredericksburg. If the CNO gets to lay the track first, it could look like this. If Norfolk gets to lay the track, it gets to look like this. Of course, it's always possible that both of the curves have been used by somebody else. In this game, you can see that both gentle curves were used. One in Fredericksburg and one in Wilmington, Columbia, has a tight curve going into Strasbourg. In this game, you can see Fredericksburg still has a gentle curve. However, Wilmington is now a tight curve connecting Strasbourg to Baltimore, and Columbia is a straight shot to Harrisburg. The bottom line is these tiles can be used to improve your runs or deny your opponents good runs. So far, we have covered the city tiles, the plain track tiles, and the town tiles. That leaves us six to discuss. DC and the five double dits. I think the best way to talk about these last six tracks are how they impact the first two operating rounds of the game. I have marked these six hexes with an upside down track to indicate that they are not available. This is because these six hexes are blocked by the private companies until at least the first three train is purchased. To set some parameters, I am going to assume that no three train is purchased during OR1 or 2. Each company will get two track lays. During the first OR, no company will be able to run because they won't have a train, and the best run will be based on their best two train run at operating round two. The PRNR is limited to two directions of his hometown. He cannot place it in this direction because it leads off the board. If he chooses the orientation northeast to southwest, he has direct access to Hagerstown. This is also beneficial if he happens to have control of the P2 private Columbia and Philadelphia Railroad, 
which will give him a couple of free builds once the three trains are broken. The northwest to southeast orientation gives him access to Columbia for an additional $40 building cost, which may get him to Baltimore. It is also good if he happens to have control of private P4, Chesapeake and Ohio Canal, which will give him access to Berlin. Without consideration of privates, this is the best two train run that he can get OR2. He can run for $40 and it will only cost him the $80 for the train. Next, let's look at CNO. The CNO has a very quick run to Norfolk as soon as it lays its home city. Regardless of his OR2 track lay, his maximum run is going to be 50. His OR2 track lay could also turn toward Washington, D.C., though it would cost him an additional $40 to get there quicker. Next, we'll look at the Norfolk and Western Railroad. The Norfolk and Western Company is also limited in the number of directions it can place its home city, based on its location at the edge of a board. This is the only legal orientation. Placing this home city is going to cost the Norfolk and Western $80 for the mountains. However, it is also the only company that can run two two trains in OR2 without placing a second token. This allows it to get a run for 50, 20, which is 70, and 40 more for 110 on OR2. This is going to cost the company $80 for their home city build and another $160 for two two trains for a total of $240. Now let's look at the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie. Pittsburgh and Lake Erie's home token actually starts off board, but the first yellow towel it lays will have to be one of the double dits. Let's look at its options. The first option is the use of the number 56 tile. This is the only legal orientation of the number 56 tile. If you rotate it clockwise, it won't touch the main city token. If you go twice, it will be leading off the board. This will give it an initial run of 50, 40 for the off board and 10 for the dip, and head it up toward Berlin. Any legal orientation of the number one tile will lead the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie straight to Ohio. Even though Ohio is one of the best two off-board locations, he can't make this run until he gets a three train. He can't build until he can upgrade a towel. If the PLE places an additional token in Greenspring on OR2, he will be able to run two trains for 50 plus 30 more for a total of 80. So, he will have to use one of the three straight tracks. Here we see the number two tau, which allows trains coming from Berlin access to Pittsburgh. The same situation occurs with the 69 tau, except for now the access is given to Ohio. The 55 tau actually minimizes the access to Pittsburgh. So I guess the bottom line is that the PLE wants to use one of the three straight house. Let's see what's useful for the other companies. Lehigh Valley is the next one we're going to look at. Lehigh Valley is also very restricted based on the number of private companies. There's exactly one legal placement for the initial home city. It cannot point directly at Philadelphia because it also points off the board. Additionally, it can't point toward Trenton because the other end would also go off the board. So the northeast to southwest connection is the only legal placement for this home city. It will be unable to build any additional track until at least one three train has been purchased. Therefore, its maximum run for OR2 will be 50, 20 for the home city and 30 for the east and dut.
Control of Delaware and Raritan Canal, P1, or the Columbia-Philadelphia Railroad, will control the rate at which the LV expands. We will talk about LV's ability to get to New York during the Phase 3 video. The Lehigh Valley could use the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal to teleport to Berlin, but that would happen during Phase 3, so we will also talk about that during the next video. Now we will take a look at the CNA. The Camden and Amboy is not as restricted as some of the other companies. It may place its home station in any one of three different directions. However, regardless of the direction, it will still have to pay $40 to lay that first towel. We are going to delay the consideration of runs to Birmingham to New York because the New York run cannot be made until a three train is bought. First consideration would be a run straight to Philadelphia. This would result in a $50 run for no additional cost and still allow building south. A second option is pointing to Burlington. This allows the run to New York eventually during operating round two. This will also result in a $50 run when it hooks up to the peninsula. The third option is attempt to race to Baltimore. This could be much more expensive, costing you an additional $80 plus the two trains. 40 for the building cost, 40 for the token, and then 160 for two two trains. This would allow you during OR2 to run both two trains for 40 plus 30 more for $70. But this would be a race against Strasburg, our next company. Even though Strasburg would not be limited in the directions of placing its home city, there is only one orientation that allows him to build in OR2 and run a train. This orientation, additional builds are blocked by the two private companies. In this orientation, he is up against Baltimore without an access and a private company. With our assumptions of only two trains, this is his best configuration. Again, it's a race against the CNA and quite expensive. In addition to the $40 for your home station, you will have $40 to build the DIT, another $40 for the station token in Baltimore, and two two trains at $160. But you have two two trains you can run for a total of $70 in OR2. This brings us to our final company, the Baltimore and Ohio. The Baltimore and Ohio is the most likely to start because of P5. It starts with one share already out. The B&O is quite limited if it wants a run on OR2. It must head directly to Washington, D.C. First laying the straight, and then the D.C. tile. This will allow it to run a single two train to D.C. for $60 in OR2. There are two possible orientations to the D.C. tile in yellow. It can port toward the northwest or to the south. And it all depends on what you want to block during the green phase. Because the track laying rules and upgrades require you to maintain the track that is already present, if you orientate it to the south, you will not be able to block the south in green. If you orientate it to the northwest, the same is true. The other two configurations allow blocking regardless of the position of the yellow towel. But that is starting to get into green phase where three and four trains are available. I will leave that for my next video. If this has been helpful, consider subscribing and ringing the bell to get notification of when I do another video. I hear the conductor. That means it's time to go. If you've enjoyed the video, leave me a like and a comment. Until next time, have fun training. One of the options that we have to review games is 18xx.games. Open the 18xx.game homepage. 
scroll down to finished games you can page through previous games until you find 18 Chesapeake click the review and it is going to show you the screen for the final game state using the buttons we can go back to the beginning of the game and then single step through the game to find out what people paid for privates double arrow will take you to the next phase in this case stock round one and you can find out which companies were started and then finally we can single step through the track builds and see what routes they laid and you can do this for each phase all the way to the end of the game additionally you can see the routes highlighted on the map in this case this is the PRR final route and this will help you plan your future games. Thank you for watching.